Hi guys. I don't know whether you can see me, so let me know. This is my viral wisdom day 22. Let me know if I am being streamed okay. I'm trying a new format, so let me know if you can hear me and see me. Just checking with my person. Hi, Instagram. Hi, everyone. Say hello. Let me know where you're checking in from. This is my Viral Wisdom course, day number 22. And I'm so excited to be here. Check in with me. Tell me where you're signing in from. How are you? How is this feeling for you? Are you stressed? Are you calm? So today, what I'd like to highlight for us is that all of us live life ultimately one step at a time. Life is really lived one step at a time. But pre-pandemic, we were in this pandemonium of activity and we were conditioned to ride ladders and take rocket ships and go in the fast lane and zoom ahead to our future. Yes, all of us can safely say that pre-pandemic, this was the cultural, global, ubiquitous mindset to zoom ahead, to get on the fast track. We always tell our children, you know, don't fall behind, don't fall behind. So it was our ubiquitous fear that we would fall behind. So let's examine that for a second. How were we living? Where were we going to fall behind from? And then what would happen if we fell behind? What does the curve look like? Who defines the curve? Who decides if we're falling behind the curve? Pre-pandemic, we lived striving to keep ahead, to keep ahead with the Joneses, so to speak, to keep ahead of tragedy, to keep ahead of our mortality, to keep ahead of our youth and aging, to keep ahead of each other. We were always keeping ahead. And life was lived as if the goal was truly more important than the process and the experience. Certainly, the experience of the process was never acknowledged. I think we can all safely say that, especially our children would say that. Our children would say that we never allowed them to enjoy childhood. We never allowed them to languorously savor time and space and creativity and boredom and stillness and solitude. We never did. Childhood was seen as a schedule, a scheduled activity in the busyness of life, as if childhood was an interruption, as if childhood was an inconvenience. We saw childhood as an encumbrance to the real point of life. And the real point of life was adulthood. The real point of life was there in the future. Not this, that. Not childhood, adulthood. And we raised our children to believe that time wasted is time wasted. As if there was such a thing as time and wastage of time. And we decided what was wastage and what wasn't. So pre-pandemonium, we were living in a pandemonium, right? In a in pre-pandemic, we were living in a pandemonium. It was pre-pandemonium. It was pre, um, pre-solitude, pre-quietude. We were living in this very feverish way to get ahead of the game, to get ahead of the curve. So how were we and how are we now? It is extremely vital that we see the difference between what was and what is, because the reason the what is is a challenge is because we are glorifying what was. And I want to show you that what was, was not something to be glorified. We were truly living in ignorance, in chaos, in this absolute fever to get ahead but in getting ahead, we were internally 
discombobulated. We were anxious. We were chaotic. But that felt normal, right? That was normal to us. That was our life. So pre-pandemic is what we call normal. And what I want to highlight to you that pre-pandemic was truly a pandemonium. It was an internal fever that we were manifesting in the external world and living our life in a feverish way to feverish manic levels. We were doing, doing, doing and constantly running to the next thing. And now all that is taken away. All that has been stripped from us and we have been brought to a grinding, screeching halt. And we are terrified because all those doings have gone away and we're missing all that sense of fervor and fever, which made us feel like we were, we were very significant. We were, we were worthy, we were important. All those things have been stripped away. So now we are left with the solitude of our own company with the solitude of our own minds and the quietude of the four walls in our home. We are in a panic, some of us, because we are losing loved ones or we're losing our jobs or our paychecks. So there's an underlying state of panic. But the real panic is because our addictions, our ways of being, our distractions, our feverish pitch of living, that has been stripped. And it's leaving us with this sense of, what am I doing with my life? I mean, I should be doing more. I should be achieving. I should be getting to there, to the future. So pre-pandemic was a certain way of living that we have now addicted ourselves to call normal. But now the what is, is the new normal, right? Is the new way of being and we can't adjust. We're having a hard time adapting because it's so apocalyptically different, so catalysmically different from the past. It's an avalanche that has been put on us of change. And the avalanche wasn't prepared for because we were living in this addicted, zombified, reactive way, totally dependent on the doing, doing, doing. So our parents raised us and we raised our children to go fast to go rocket ship speed, to take a, uh, the shortcut, the fast cut, the speedy way to get ahead. Now all that is stopped. So now you're feeling this panic. You're not used to it. Many of us will be asked to change our jobs, change our lifestyles, adapt, move homes maybe, downsize, downgrade. So this brings panic because all those layers of our padding have been stripped. So now what do we do? What do we do with the now? How do we be in this now without our past addictions, without our past ways of being, without that fever? We're not, we're not used to living without that fever. So the only way to realign and to reassess and to reconfigure and rebirth is to shift our mania from fast to slow, from doing to being, from rocket ship to one step at a time. The only way, any way, to manifest a purposeful aligned life is to put one foot in front of the other. So whenever clients come to me, chaotic and feverish and in a panic about their lives, it is the job of a good coach, a good therapist, to distill their life down to one step each moment. And that's the skill that allows them to stop being in the pandemonium of madness and begin to connect with who it is they are. So this is what we now need to do right here in this present pandemic. We are asked to get off the fast track, to get off the doing train, to burn the rocket ships, to let go of all the ladders of success and achievement. We are asked to enter this moment 
and only this moment. Anyway, if people ask me pre-pandemic, how do we manifest? How do we declare our purpose and see it in fruition in the world? How do we do that? Anyway, I used to say that the only way you can do that is you take one foot out of the kitchen and into the living room. From the living room to the bedroom. From the bedroom, you open the window. From the window, you look outside. And then open the door and go outside. And then, and then, and then, and then. It's so micro. It's so in each step forward. So no matter if you don't have a job right now, and no matter if you've lost someone dear, or if you're living absolutely the same, no matter what, because we are in lockdown, we are forced to lock into the only thing we have control over, which is this present moment. So whether you are grieving any sort of change, whether you are starting again, whether you are letting go, the answer to it all is from the bedroom to the living room, to the living room, to the kitchen, to the door, to the outside. It's step by step by step. This is our only way of living. But pre-pandemic, we had forgotten this. <laughs> we had been living in an illusion that there was a fast track, a fast pass, and an easy pass out of the present moment. We thought the future was the destination. We thought there was something to achieve. We thought that something out there would give us worth and, and value. And now we're realizing that all of that was a lie. All of that old way of living was taking us further and further and further away from our hearts, from our core, from our essence, and from who it is we are. We had been so keeping up with the Joneses so wanting the neighbors to think we were amazing, so wanting our Facebook strange friends, stranger friends to adulate and emulate us, that we had forgotten the most vital piece of all. Who am I right here, right now? What do I want to do right here, right now? Can I be my best companion right here, right now? We had sold ourselves as slaves in the marketplace of success, worth, belonging, as if these were commodities that could be sold to the other for a price. We had given away our power to the highest bidder. And this is what this pandemic is now asking us, forcing us really to reevaluate our entire idea of pre-pandemic living, our, ide our entire idea of what life is truly about. All of that was an illusion. All of that was a lie because it was all external driven and future driven. And as long as life is externally driven, dependent on the other, the other could be your partner, the other could be your beauty, your youth, your career, your purpose. It doesn't matter what the other is, your role as a mother, your role as a career person, whatever that other is, it's a lie because your worth is not related to anything outside. And the second illusion of pre-pandemic living is that your worth is based on who you are going to be, who you're going to be, <laughs> the biggest illusion of all. So we never learned, who am I right now in this moment? And the only way to live life is from this moment, the next foot forward, and then the next foot forward. So if you're going through a crisis and you're having a hard time adjusting, understand that it's not because of the virus, it's because perhaps for the first time in your life, you're forced to live in the lockdown of the present. And you're not allowed to wander into the future. You're not allowed to get your worth from the outside. You're not allowed anymore. You can't go outside. You can't dress up. You can't distract. You can't band-aid. You can't uh, deny. You can't suppress. You know, how much can you do it under the scrutiny of your family 24-7? You can't. All your escapes, all the escape routes have been clogged. So the reason you're in a panic is not just because of this stealthy virus, that's a piece of it, but it's not all of it. The reason we're in panic is because our distractions and our band-aids have all been taken away. And now we're forced to be locked into the present moment. The, the home that we're asked to be locked down in is the internal home. And we don't like it because we've never ever 
discovered this internal home. This internal home is too scary for us. We've never locked into the present moment. It's too scary for us. Mm -hmm. So it's not the virus that is the threat. It is our inability to adapt to this home in this present moment, to this home in this here and now. This is our greatest inability because we've been so addicted to living fast, to living competing, to living achieving, to living doing, performing, gaining adulation, wanting to accrue. All of that is now gone. And we are asked to discover who we are without, who we are within, right? This is the reason we're panicking, people. You think you're panicking because of something else. That's just the surface layer of the panic. The real panic is, I don't know how to live in the present moment. And I don't know how to live as just me without my band-aids, without my seductions. This much quietude is too unnerving. This much stillness is too scary, too chaotic. I'm terrified mm -hmm. of not having the future to distract me from the present. I'm terrified to remove all my denials and to see life and myself in the bare mirror. I am I'm petrified of losing the illusion that I could predict my future. Now, I know that there's no way to predict the future. I was playing this game with a friend of mine the other day. Let's imagine, you know, what could happen? What are the most crazy things that could happen in the next five years? Because five years ago, we could never predict we'd be in a lockdown in our home 24-7. So my friend was like, yeah, I could open a carpet store in Uzbekistan. And I was like, yeah, and I could be raising sheep in Bhutan, right? Who knows? Now it's like, who knows? So this who knows was always part of life, but we had faked it. We had pretended that we knew, we knew, you know, I'm going to become this when I grow up. And we used to tell our children, you know, you should not become a dancer. You should become a lawyer because dancers are not happy people. Only lawyers are happy. And why are lawyers happy, mommy? Because they are successful. Oh, really, mommy? Dancers can't be happy? No, I don't think so, right? And we had faked it to our children as if we knew what we were talking about. And, and we told them that, you know, if you marry like this and if you marry at this age and if you do this and if you do that, then all these amazing things in the name of happiness are going to be given to you, plonking mm -hmm. into your lap. And the child said, really, mommy? And we're like, yeah, yeah, really, really. And all the dads thought they knew what they were doing. And we were raising, shearing the, sh the coats of our children's sheep wool uh, and, and pruning them into the shape that we wanted them, right? And we were carving them into these little automaton little puppets as if we knew what we were talking about. And now this comes, this pandemic, and it's shown us that we have no clue. Literally now for the first time in our lives, we have fully realized that the future is not in our hands. Not only the grand future, like literally, we don't know the next 24 hours. We literally don't know it. But this was the truth of every wisdom teacher and every wisdom tradition. The wisdom traditions knew you don't know anything. So that is the anxiety. The anxiety is because we have never lived without the distractions and the illusions that we have lived with until now. So for the first time, we are locked into the present moment. And the present moment is terrifying because we are trained to want to be on some fast track and rocket ship. And this slow, one step at a time feels like it's too elementary, feels like it's not normal. But the only thing normal in life, and I teach my clients, is to put one foot in front of the other and check into the present moment, the present moment the present moment. How do you feel right now? What are you truly experiencing right now? What is your process right now? Not your idea of tomorrow, not your idea of who you will be, not your ideas of, of meeting the expectations of others, but who are you in the present moment? And it is this that is the new adaptation. And those that will survive and thrive this will be those who understand that life is lived one foot forward one foot forward. And it's a metaphor when I say from the kitchen to the bedroom, the bedroom to the living room. What that means is it has to start from here. We were living outside in. Now we're forced to live inside out. Now we're forced to cultivate the inside 
and the inside is not known to us. None of us have sat learning who we are in the inside on the, on the deep internal level at our core. None of us have truly said, okay, what is this moment? What can I do right now? How can I just move forward now? And to distill our life into the micro. Now, this is the genius of life. This is the genius of living a wise life. Only now, 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 now. Not in a reckless way. Oh, I might as well, you know, snort uh, 20 pounds of cocaine this week because who cares? We don't know the future. No, that's not authentic. That's an escape. That's denial. When you live in the now, one foot forward, you're truly living connected, authentic. Who am I? No, 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 really. Who am I? Who am I now? Truly connecting inside me and now, me and now, and building this relationship of one foot forward at a time. This relationship to the present moment, to putting our foot forward in a mindful way. Where do I want to go now? What's my next step? slowing things down to listening and being attuned to the present, this is the wisdom of the wisdom. This is the wisdom of the Tao, the wisdom of life, the only way to live. There is no other way to live except putting one foot forward in the now. So this is the adaptation. So all of us are on different ranges of the spectrum of how we are surviving right now. Some of us have lost our loved ones all the way down to some of us are doing really well and thriving, but there's a gamut in between the loss of loved ones, the loss of jobs, the loss of money, income, career, the loss of certainty, right? Then, then coming down to the loss of freedom, the loss of our uh, old habits, the loss of our patterns, the loss of our schedules, the loss of our organization, all the way down to people who are like, oh, I also lost my chaos. I also lost my stress. Thank goodness. Right? So we have the whole gamut of different adaptations. But no matter what, no matter where you are on the spectrum, no matter what you're going through, the only way out is within, right? So the within means who am I right here, right now? This is the only answer to any predicament in life, to any solution. It's come to the present come to the present and align with who it is you are right here, right now. So many of us can use this as a portal and will experience unyielding, unbridled calm for the first time in our lives. For those of us who see this as a window to learn a new way of living, will see this as an unparalleled, unprecedented opportunity. But if we don't see it as that, then the rest of us will simply be in detox withdrawal symptoms, you know, shivering and shaking out of the panic of the present. Most of us will be doing that, will be in complete and utter terror of what is happening to us. We won't be able to adapt. We won't be able to move. The tyranny of our attachment to the past will keep us resistant and tantruming and fearful in the present. Those that will survive are those that see this as an unparalleled opportunity to learn an entirely new language, an entirely new code, an entirely new relationship with themselves in the present moment. This is your choice. Will you be completely seduced by your attachment to the past or will you see this as this unparalleled opportunity to learn a new way of being with you in the present moment. If you choose to enter the portal to learn a new way, then understand the only way forward now ongoingly, and don't forget this when you emerge from this tunnel, is to never again live predicated on the future, but only to start living your life, who am I right now? How do I feel right now? What is one step I can take right now? And when you come out of this pandemic, right, when you will be post pandemic, this is the lesson you need to take forward with you. That all the other ways of living, that manic, feverish, obsessive way where you were in doing state, constantly creating, producing, achieving, trying to succeed, trying to outwit, outdo, outweigh, outcompare, 
all those ways can never again come again into your life. Never again. You have to remember this lesson that this, who am I right now? What step can I take right now? And only living aligned this way, this is the way you need to take forward post pandemic. Don't forget this because this is the lesson of this virus that the only way to live is through a true communion, true union with who it is you are in this present moment. So again, when you come out and you tell your children, oh my God, you have to go ahead of the curve. Oh, you wasted time. My goodness, like let's move, move, move. What are you doing? You're stopping to smell the roses. You're stopping to figure out who you are. You're stopping to figure out. You can't be stopping to figure out. That you do when you are retiring. Right now, we have to have it figured out. We have to keep moving as if we know. This messaging is toxic. No more can we allow ourselves to save. But in order to fully embody this lesson, you need to be practicing this new adaptation right here, right now. Don't miss the old because the old was a true pandemonium. It was a true chaos. It was truly predicated on lies that the future is more important than the present. The external is more important than the internal. And this is teaching us, no, I have to switch it. I have to reverse it. Now it's me. Who am I? It's my turn now. Now I need to do things my way. I don't need to race ahead anymore. I don't need to outachieve anymore. I'm seeing, I don't need to get ready anymore. I don't need to dress up anymore. There's a lot I'm living without that I never thought I could live without. I thought I needed all the things I needed, but apparently I don't because here I am without. So the fact that I am without, maybe I never needed it in the first place. So now when I reemerge out of this pandemonium, let me not pandemonium, this pandemic, let me not forget the pre pandemonium of pre pandemic times. Let me not forget that how it used to be. And let me now adapt to a completely new code of living. So can you give yourself a new code of living? This is your chance to learn a complete new language, a new way of life, a new existence, a new birth. Can you allow for the, this, this narrow moment in time to be a portal to your new you? Now that is your choice. You can do the old and you can wait to go back and you can go back to that chaos where you live for the future, where you live enslaved for the approval of others, where you live hungry for validation from your job title, from your money, from your status, from your belonging. Or you can realize that all of that was just a distraction because the real relationship is only to you right here, to you right here to you right here. And as you begin to reorient your life from that crazy outside living, external living, future living to the present living, to me and now, me and now, me and now, one foot forward from my internal alignment, your entire code of living is going to shift. It is time to create a new code. But the only way to create a new code of living is to dump the old. You can't do the old and the new. This is not a hybrid version. This is either or. Of course, you can take your time, but this is, this is where it's the red pill or the blue pill, right? It's not a hybrid of purple or green, whatever red and blue makes, brown. It's not. It's either or. Now, choose. Authentic living, present moment living, living aligned, living slow, living awake, living here, or the old, we know the old, chaotic, stressed, adding to the resume, collecting things, you know, more is better that way or this way. In this way, we've clearly seen less is better. We're not really spending, the other day I got my credit card uh, bill and I'm like, it has never been this low. How come I'm living on one fifth of what I was living? Obviously I was in excess. Obviously I was in complete denial and distraction. I was just accruing and adding. Obviously I don't need those things. So now I have a choice. Can I remember this? But the only way to remember it is to instill it, is to go deeply into the practice of living in the here and now. My relationship with me 
in the now. I'm not living according to other people anymore. I'm not living according to what they tell me the future needs to look like. I am going to carve my own present moment. I'm powerful. I'm old enough. I'm not a child, although we always are children anymore. I don't have mom and dad on my shoulders. I don't have big brother on my shoulders. This is my time to reinvent my tomorrow. So this is going to happen now, but it's up to you to see this as a portal. It's not the virus. The virus has actually given us a magnificent opportunity to now learn how to live in the present moment. And all we can do every single day for those of us who are having to truly recalibrate new jobs, recalibrate new identities, you can only do it moment by moment, one foot forward. So each day wake up to decide, how am I going to walk outside my bedroom to the next place and then to the next place and then to the next place. It's so easy to get overwhelmed. It's so easy to get stressed out, but the, there is for the first time, no need to live in that manic obsession of stress and anxiety. For the first time, because we are forced to, we are asked to live in the simplicity, in, in the quietude, in the solitude, in the, in the nuance, in the silence, in the, in the unattended, uh, right? No one is watching us anymore. In the privacy of this moment. This is the adaptation. This is the shock. We can't live our lives on display anymore. It's just us in the privacy of our homes. Only us. And this is what's scaring us because we're like, I don't know if I even like me. I don't know if I like us. I don't know if I like this present moment. I just want to do, I want to escape, I want to go. But where are you going to go? So this lockdown is so amazing because they, it makes you realize you can't go anywhere. You can only take one foot forward, step by step. There are no friends now. There are no distractions, just you and you and you. So it's you and the present moment. So this is the vital teaching of this pandemic. This is the vital lesson. You can choose to take it, you can choose to learn it, or you, it may be not your time, and that's okay. That's okay, but understand that your stress and anxiety right now is not because of anything on the outside. It is because you don't know yet how to live connected to yourself and the present moment. So if you want to learn more about how to live in the present moment, I teach a meditation class, and I go there in a few minutes after this teaching. It's facebook.com forward slash groups, forward slash get super powered. Facebook.com forward slash groups, forward slash get super powered. Come, it's a free Facebook page where I teach how to meditate and how to live in the present moment. And also one more announcement is that I have a community of sisters of women only, sorry guys, um, called Luminous. And I open its membership twice a year. So it's open right now till May 15th. If you wanna join a community of like-minded and like-hearted sisters and truly enter a tribe, I'm there on Facebook almost every other day and I teach every week there. It's only 25 bucks a month, but I shan't minimize it in these times, 25 could be a lot. But for the value you get, it's, it's really a steal. So if you wish to explore it, go to my website, drshefali.com and join me in Luminous. If not, come to this free Facebook page and meditate with me. I would love to see you there. So it's one foot forward, one step at a time, only this moment, only you, you and this moment. Thank you for joining me, guys. I will see you back here tomorrow.